Citrus breeding is, is a, is a long-term venture. It's not something where you, you pick a problem and you, you attack it today. You do lots of different things over time. We're working in a number of different areas together with, with my, my colleagues, Jude Grosser and, and Bill Castle and, and all of the, the folks who work in our labs. Well, in Florida, 90% uh, of the fruit goes to processing for our orange juice. One of our big goals is to facilitate the um, NFC, not from concentrate product. So we've been working a lot on uh, generating sweet oranges that uh, have different maturity dates that can make it more economical to uh, produce the NFC product. We have what we call the rapid evaluation system. And what we do is we grow this tree as a single stem. So as it's a small plant, we remove all the side shoots and it continues to grow and puts out more side shoots, we remove them. So we're really pushing this thing just to grow up as a single stem, 10, 12, 13 feet tall. Then we bend that stem over and we can girdle the trunk and within two years, with some crosses, we can have flowers and fruit on those trees rather than waiting four, five, six, seven years. We're looking at rootstocks, new rootstocks, and uh, one of the serendipitous things that has come about is before HLB, this terrible disease, became an issue in Florida, we planted these field trials. And as we've looked at HLB move across the state of Florida like a tsunami wave, uh, what we're seeing is a few things that are standing after the wave has, has come through. We're noticing that the rootstock uh, seems to impact the frequency of the disease and also the severity of the disease once trees become infected. The two top rootstocks in the state are Swingle Citrimolo and Carrizo Citrange and both of them in this trial have over 70 percent infection already. Whereas we have experimental rootstocks that are as low as 7 percent. So it's all about an order of magnitude difference and this is just one location so if that happens to repeat on other locations then it'll be something to get get excited about. Coming into this trial this material was not uh, selected specifically for greening tolerance it suggests that if you start selecting for uh, tolerance to greening at an early stage you might be able to really find something that can mitigate or, or assist the tree once when it's in a greening environment. A very high priority to us right now to take what looks like resistance and, and to really test it and to prove it in the field with with very large scale plantings not small trials but large plantings and if what we think we have really works the way it, it appears to be working so far, um, that will be a, a huge contribution because it'll keep this industry alive for the next 10, 15, 20 years. That's a primary goal. That would be huge. And we'd, we'd love to be able to do that.